Hi, I'm Craig. The goal of this video is to provide an overview of the strategies that are available in the Lifetime Investment Calculator. This slide represents the strategies that you will find in the strategy dropdown. And as you can see on the left of each table, I've listed the strategy. And on the right, I've listed the asset classes for which the strategy is comprised. So the S&P 500 is primarily US large cap blend. The ultimate buy and hold worldwide includes the 10 asset classes that Paul is so famous for. And you can see I've listed the remainder here on the right-hand side. We'll start this video by looking at the all small cap value US strategy and comparing that against the S&P 500 so that you can see how they, uh, the strategies have played out over the 51 year period. So I'll go ahead and switch over to the calculator. As always, I start with the default view. I'm gonna get rid of some of the noise. So I'm going to remove the uh, equity fixed income allocation so that we're not looking at any bond information. I'm gonna start with just $1,000 uh, so that we can show the 51 year uh, growth of that $1,000 with no contributions. So I've zeroed out the contribution amount per year. And then we're gonna start with, I, I, I've added this S&P 500 baseline uh, to all of the strategies. Uh, it's available in the equity and fixed income allocation as a checkbox. So we're gonna jump straight to that all small cap value US. And now we can compare the large cap blend of the S&P 500 index against the small cap value US portfolio. As I scroll down, you can see that over the 51 year period, the S&P 500 large cap blend would have grown, $1,000 would have grown to $179,000. In the all small cap value US over the 51 year period, it would have grown to $639,000. So that's a huge difference, of course. Now let's trace down the years and see the history, right? I'm always focusing on the big losses uh, and the volatility so that I can better prepare myself uh, for when those losses happen. You can see that both the S&P 500 large cap blend and the all small cap value portfolios both had down years in 73 and 74, right? The small cap value lost 30% in 73 compared to the large cap blend of the S&P 500, which only lost 14%. So you can see that these small cap companies, the small cap value companies, uh, performed worse during this period. There was also a bit of volatility in 87, where all small cap value lost 6%, but the large cap blend of the S&P 500 gained 5.2%. And it, there were much worse losses in 90. Uh, but in the year 2000, the large cap blend of the S&P 500 had a bear market, a loss of 9.1% compared to the all small cap value. So you can see in the year 2000, when large, large companies were down, small cap value companies were up for those two years. And then there was a small loss in 2002 Looking down to the S&P 500, the 2008 financial crisis, right? In 2007, small companies took a hit, but the large uh, blend companies didn't in the S&P 500 in the U.S. market. So this is really interesting to see this history and the volatility that's uh, available in small cap value. Of course, the returns are huge compared to the S&P 500. Now we're going to flip over to the four fund strategies. We have a U.S. version where all of the asset classes are in the United States, and then a worldwide version where half of the asset classes are in the United States and the other half are in international markets. In this case, we're trying to hit the four corners of the market. So we're looking at large cap blend, large cap value, small cap blend, and small cap value. You can see in the international worldwide four fund strategy, we put the large cap value and the small cap blend in the international markets as well. 
So I'll flip back over to the strategy and then change it here to the four fund US. Again, we're comparing it against the baseline of the S&P 500. And let's see how that does. As you scroll to the bottom over the 51 year period, the four fund US strategy uh, is at $345,000 uh, compared to the $179,000 of the large cap blend in the US market. In terms of volatility, we can see, you know, similarly in those bear markets, uh, you've got a 23% loss in the four fund compared to 14% loss in 73. But uh, in 75, you can see that the four fund strategy comes roaring back, right? In 1975, it was a 51% gain in the four fund compared to a 37% gain in the large cap blend of the S&P 500. We also experienced a little bit of different volatility here in uh, other down years of the S&P 500, so namely 77 and uh, 81. And then jumping down to the 2000, you can see, again, that extra diversification of the four fund strategy uh, doesn't have those down markets. Of, uh, so in 2000, it's grown, uh, most likely because of that small cap value that we, uh, we showed earlier. Uh, it, grown, it grew 4.1% as opposed to a 9.1% loss in the S&P 500 large cap blend. There are a couple of down markets um, with similar, 2008 was a similar level. So 37.6% loss in the four fund versus a 37% loss. And then there were some losing years uh, in the four fund strategy compared to the S&P 500. Now we'll diversify further with the worldwide. So I'm looking at the four fund worldwide strategy, and this is 50% international, 50% US. So in this case, we've added, you know, the international component, which is further diversification outside of the United States. And, uh, you know, we can learn similar lessons, right? 73 and 74 in this four fund strategy, you know, we're also down. They seem to be greater. So it looks like compared to the previous four fund US, the international, the addition of international uh, made it more, more volatile. So I'll just quickly flip back and forth there. Well, forgive me. I've noted this incorrectly. So in the US, in the four fund US strategy, we had 23 and 22% losses in 73 and 74. But when we diversify into the worldwide strategy at 50-50, the loss in the first year is 15%, and the loss in the second year is 30% instead of 24%. So that's an interesting uh, piece of information there, that in the first year, the international diversification helped us, but in the second year, uh, it hurt us of 74 of that bear market. So now we're going to shift over to the all-value worldwide portfolio. You can see we're trying to capture value and a bit of emerging markets in this strategy. We capture both large cap and small cap value, both in the US and internationally. So I'll flip back to the dashboard and we'll check this one out. So in a 50-50 asset allocation, let's see how we did. The, uh, the all value portfolio in these bear markets of 73 and 74. Again, you can see that the value uh, we did better than the S&P 500 through this diversification in 73, but in 74, there was a, an impact uh, where we had, it looks like the international markets were, uh, were impacted as well in 74. In 81, the S&P 500 was down 4.9%. But this all value worldwide portfolio is up 10.6%. So this suggests, of course, that the large cap blend of US S&P 500 uh, perform, uh, performed worse than this diversified all value portfolio. So the value stocks won during this time. Going down to the 2000, again, focusing on the bear markets, uh, there was a, in this all value worldwide portfolio, there was a 1% gain instead of a 9.1% loss. But there was some extra volatility in the, uh, in the future years of 2011, 2015. 
to wrap up, you can really see how the different asset classes have had an impact over these past 51 years uh, through the different strategies that the Merriman Foundation promotes. We started by looking at all small cap value US, comparing that against the S&P 500, and then we shifted over to the four fund strategies, both in the US and worldwide, followed by a quick look at the all value worldwide strategy. We hope that you can continue to dig in and look at the other strategies that we have here, in particular, the fully diversified ultimate buy and hold worldwide strategy. Or if you're interested in all small cap value worldwide, you can see how that has uh, performed over the years. Our goal with these videos as always is to provide you the tools so that you can dig in and learn about the past and hopefully make better decisions for your future. Thank you for tuning in. We really hope that this video has been helpful in understanding the different strategies that are available in the lifetime calculator, but also promoted by the foundation. We look forward to continuing the conversation through video. Please feel free to share any feedback that you have uh, over email. Take care.